Take your Bibles and turn with me, please, to Luke chapter 11, and we'll look at one verse momentarily, verse 1. Luke 11, verse 1. I'm convinced that the most important thing that any of us will do in a day is to spend time with the Lord in prayer. I want to encourage you, and let me just say this to you, I believe that if you've not prayed yet today you really need to rectify that as quickly as you can a day without prayer really is a wasted day I believe that if you want to know where your life as a Christian is look at your prayer life that really is the litmus test of your walk with the Lord because prayer is at the heart of biblical Christianity. You can read the Gospels. It doesn't take very long to figure out how significant prayer was to the Lord Jesus and to the apostles of Jesus. When you read the Gospels, you see Jesus praying. When you read the book of Acts, you see the early church praying. You know, nowadays we have so many things to help us, so many things to help us and to aid us in ministry. Sometimes I'm afraid we might think that we really don't need the power of God. But I want to say this to you. You can be out in the middle of nowhere with no electricity, no television, no fancy lights, no fancy pews. But if you've got prayer, you've got God. And if you've got God, that's all you need to have a church. Amen? We need the power of God. Don't ever let something that is developed by man, replace prayer. I heard Don Miller say years ago, God's house, according to Jesus, is supposed to be a house of prayer. So if it's not a house of prayer, whose house is it? Not the Lord's. If a church does anything, we ought to pray. That's why we're talking today about Praying Like It Matters. We're in a series of messages called Living Like It Matters. Live Like It Matters. You only get one life. God has given each of you, listen to what I'm about to say, He's given each of you a purpose in this life. It is your job to talk with the Lord and to find out what He wants you to do in life and then for you to be about God's business. Whatever God lays on your heart, this is why you're on this planet. I'll give you a hint. You're not here simply to have a job, to make money, simply to raise a family. All of that's good. Simply to pay some bills, buy a house, maybe finally get it paid off and have a little bit enough to retire on and then barely eke your way to the grave. That is not the primary purpose of God for your life. There's something else. Maybe God wants you to be a soul winner. Maybe He wants you to be a prayer warrior. Maybe He wants you to be an encourager. But there's something in your life, the reason God has put you here, that is more significant than anything. And the only way you find out about that is when you spend time with God in prayer. This text really sums it up. Look at Luke 11 verse 1. It happened. You know, when you, when you start off with that, you know something's important. It happened that while Jesus was what? What was Jesus doing? Praying. I encourage you to read all four Gospels and highlight every time you see the Lord praying. He prays all the time. While He was praying in a certain place, After he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, say it with me, teach us to pray. Lord, teach us to pray. Just as John, that's John the Baptist, also taught his disciples. Notice, Jesus prayed. He's God in the flesh, yet he needed to pray. Now, the question is obvious. If Jesus needed to pray, do you think maybe Steve needs to pray. Do you think maybe you need to pray? 
Yes, Jesus wasn't just doing that as an example. Jesus needed to pray. He needed to talk with the Father. He was 100% man, 100% God simultaneously, and he needed to pray. And he prayed, notice, in a certain place. Do you have a prayer place where all your prayer stuff, do you understand the word stuff, where all your prayer stuff is there? Your Bible, your prayer cards, your prayer list, whatever, a hymnal, whatever it might be. Do you have a prayer place where you can go and spend time with the Lord? And then the Bible says, his disciples said, after he had finished, they were so enamored with his prayer life, they said, Lord, teach us to pray. Notice what they did not say. They didn't say, teach us to preach, teach us to raise money, teach us to be great speakers or teachers, teach us to read a gazillion books or write a gazillion books. They didn't say, Lord, teach us to start a, a school or whatever. They said, Lord, if you don't teach us anything, and this is the only time in the Bible they say teach us to do something. It's the only time. Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray just like John's teaching his disciples. Lord, teach us to pray. How many of you believe Jesus can teach us to pray? All right. All right, I'm going to give you, I know you're staring at those 12 blanks. I know it. I can feel the tension in the room. Let's get started. How many of you, and I'm being as serious as I can be, how many of you would like to really learn how to pray? Raise your hand. Anybody out there? Okay. All right. What I'm going to give you is a synopsis of what I believe are the 12 most important aspects of prayer. Now, you know, you can't talk about prayer and only talk about two or three things, all right? Take these down. I won't be able to cover anything exhaustively today, but we're just going to hit it high but you take these home and you really study these and God will start teaching you to pray. Number one, if you want to pray like it matters, pray daily. Write this down. It is not what you do in a day that matters. It's what you do every day that matters. It's not what you can do in a day that matters. It's what you do every day that matters. There's some things you ought to do every day. Some things you ought to do every day, and prayer is one of them. Every day you should spend time with God in prayer. A day, Don Miller said years ago, a day without prayer is a wasted day. I agree with him 100%. We live in a wicked, perverted, immoral world. This world is not getting better. It is getting more and more sinful, and it will do that way until Jesus comes back. The progressives tell us, oh, the world is getting better. They believe that because they believe in evolution. They believe everything's getting better. Well, everything's not getting better. Everything's getting worse. That's what Jesus said. And so you need to pray. I would be terrified to enter into any day that I didn't pray over. If you're living in a day right now that you didn't pray over, you're not as safe, you're not as secure, and you're not as serene as you would have been had you gone to bed on time, gotten up on time, and spent some time with God in prayer. I'm not trying to make you feel guilty. I'm just showing you that you ought to spend time with God every day in prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. Literally, give us this day's daily bread. Not praying for tomorrow's bread. We're like the people who got the manna every morning. We're like the sparrows that God feeds every day. We want bread for today, so we're going to say, God, give us this day our daily bread. Do you pray every day? There's some things you ought to do every day. You ought to breathe every day. You ought to sleep sometime every day. Not now. (laughs) You ought to take a shower every day or a bath. Please do that. (laughs) You ought to eat every day. I'm not worried about Baptists. They got that one down. (laughs) You ought to wear clothes every day. Please. 
And you ought to read the Bible and pray every day. Every day. Just something you do. Not just on Sundays, not just on holidays, not when your life, just when your life is in the turmoil. That's when America prays. You know, we all, you, you let something like 9-11 happen, and boy, we're all about prayer. But after everything's over with, we forget that. Don't be that way. Every day, your conversation with the Lord through prayer is very important because if you love someone, you talk with them. The psalmist said he prayed because he loved the Lord. He said in Psalm 116, one of my favorite texts in the Bible about prayer, verses 1 and 2, I love the Lord. Let's all say that out loud. I love the Lord. Notice, because he hears my voice and my prayer for mercy, because he bends down to listen, I will pray as long as I have breath. I love the Lord, I will pray. I love the Lord, I will pray. Say it with me. I love the Lord, I will pray. Number one thing, pray every day. Pray daily. Number two, pray early. I'm not an early person. Yes, you are. You just haven't discovered it yet. (laughs) Psalm 5, verses 1 through 3. Give ear to my words, O God. Consider my meditation. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God. For unto thee will I pray. Now listen, my voice shalt thou hear in the morning. O Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee, and I will look up. Hey, when you get up, look up. When you get up, look up. Don't look around. Don't look for your cell phone. Don't look for your computer. Don't look for social media. Don't look for who called you in the night. They shouldn't have called you in the night. Don't look at emails. Don't look at the news. Don't look at television. When you get up, Look up. Talk to the Lord. Get connected this way before you get connected this way. Get vertical before you get horizontal. Psalm 143, verse 8, let me hear your loving kindness in the morning, for I trust in you. Teach me the way in which I should walk, for to you I lift up my soul. That's what prayer is, lifting your soul up to God and taking a bath in His presence. Jesus prayed every morning, in the early morning, Mark 1, in the early morning while it was still dark. He arose, he went out, departed to a lonely place, and he was praying there. If you're going to be like Jesus, you're going to have to get up in the morning. That means you need to go to bed on time. Everybody needs some rest. The Bible says it's vain to rise up early, to retire late, to eat the bread of painful labors. Don't get up early and go to bed late, the Bible says. He gives to his beloved, even in his sleep. Really, it means he gives to his beloved sleep. Sleep is a blessing. If you're not getting enough sleep, it's not God's fault, it's your fault. Go to bed on time. Get up on time. Seek first the kingdom of God. Put God first. When I get a paycheck, it's natural to me. You say, oh, you're legalistic. No, I'm disciplined on that. I get a paycheck. I pay more than a tithe to the budget. I give to the love offering. I give to missions every 24 times a year, I get paid first thing I do, easiest thing I do, best thing I do. I'm going to invest in the kingdom of God. Why? Because I'm going to seek first the kingdom of God with my finances, and I'm going to also do it with my time. I get up. I go. I grab my prayer cards. I read my Bible, and I walk out to the treadmill, and I get on the treadmill and I walk and pray. I don't burn it up. I go three miles in about an hour and three minutes, something like that. So that's not burning it up. You say, why in the world do you walk on a treadmill while you're praying? Because I don't want to fall asleep, and you won't fall asleep on a treadmill but one time. (laughs) That'll wake you up. So I get up, and I walk, and I pray. And I've got a system, and I'll talk to you about my system sometime and tell you how I can do it, but you need to learn that it's first. Just get up and do what God wants you to do. I spend time praising the Lord. There's some things I pray for every day. There's some things I pray for two or three times a week. But I spend my first time in the day with the Lord. 
I pray about everything in my day. I've already prayed over my whole day. I've got so many things to do today. I'm telling you, I wouldn't even want to try to wake up today. I've got a full day. But you know what? I've got a great Lord. And I've prayed over everything, and I fully expect Him to bless every part of it. Every part of it. Pray early. Number three, pray privately. Get alone with the Lord when you pray. Matthew 6, 5 through 6. When you pray, not if you pray, when you pray, Jesus said, you're not to be like the hypocrites, the play actors, the mask wearers, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues on the street corners so that they may be seen by men. They're not talking to God. They're trying to impress men. Truly I say to you, they have their reward in full. That's all the reward they get. But you, contrast, when you pray, go into your inner room. Shut the door. Close the door. Pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. How many of you believe that? Anybody believe that? You say, well, you're a legalist. I shut the door. I, I literally shut the door. When I go out there, we've got a little room adjacent to our garage. i got my stuff out there, that, my treadmill and stuff. I shut the door. Why? I, it's just symbolic. This is, just, this, this is my God time. It's just me and the Lord. And I pour out my heart to the Lord. You know, when the door is shut, you can get real open and honest. Amen? And really talk to the Lord. The Bible says that you need to do that. Now, there's going to be some, how many of you know there's going to be some times that you can't get alone? You've got kids, you've got other things, maybe you're traveling. Then you need to practice what I call insulated prayer. Say that with me insulated prayer. Write that down. And then write down this reference, Luke 9, 18. Look at this verse. This will bless your heart. And it happened. There it is again. I love that. And it happened that while he was praying alone, the disciples were with him. What? Did I read that wrong? Did Luke confuse two sentences? While he was praying alone, the disciples were with him. Jesus could be with other people physically and still concentrate and be with the Father spiritually. He was insulated. I've had to do this a lot in the last two years. Get on an airplane, wake up 4 o'clock, go catch an airplane. I didn't have time to pray at the house, didn't have time to get on the treadmill. I had to go. So I went on there. What I do is I take earplugs and I stick them in. You know, Donna said, you don't need them. You can't hardly hear anyway. But anyway, I stick them in. <laughs> and I read my Bible and pray on an airplane. Let me just say this. If you want to talk with God, you will find a way. You'll find a way. If you have to wait for all the circumstances to be perfect, you'll never have a good prayer life. I can remember Donna when our kids were little and she was nursing babies and taking care of She prayed all the time, but she did it with a lot of kids around her. You know, one of the great examples of this was John Wesley's mother, the famous founder of Methodism, great soul winner. His mother, Susanna Wesley, had 19 children. Nine died in infancy. But at any moment, she'd have 10 children around her, and she would take the outer part of her clothes, her, her, her garment there, and pull it over her head. And the kids knew, be quiet, mama's talking to Jesus. And if you're not quiet, she's going to come out of there with a belt, amen? <laughs> when she put that over her head, she, she was alone with the Lord. You can find time if you're really hungry with God. Be creative. Go for a walk. Go for a drive. Go into a literal closet. How many of you saw the movie War Room? Anybody? Go into a literal closet, but pray privately. All right, I got to gear up here. You want to pray like it matters? Pray privately. Pray worshipfully. Isaiah 66, verse 2. But to this one I will look to him who is humble and contrite of spirit, who trembles at my word. God is to be revered. You know what's wrong with America? The fear of God is not in America. We don't tremble before the Lord. We don't humble ourselves before the Lord. 
We don't worship the Lord like Isaiah did. I want to tell you, God is not the man upstairs. God is high and lifted up. He is the thrice holy God. Holy is the Father. Holy is the Son. Holy is the Holy Spirit. God is an awesome God. Isaiah was so caught up in his presence, he said, Woe is me, I am undone, for I am a man of unclean lips. And I live among a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. If you could see God right now, you know what you'd do? You'd hit the deck. Even if you're a Baptist. You'd hit the deck. Pray for him worshipfully. I, I, I use the names of God. They're every name of God in the Bible shows us part of his character. Now we're going to do this fast, but how many of you know that Jesus started his prayer talking about the names of God. He said, he said, pray then in this way, Matthew 6, 9, pray then in this way, our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Say that together, hallowed be thy name. That means sanctified, holy, revered is your name. I take these eight names every day and I cry out to God. Number one, I start off with this, Father, I praise you that you are Jehovah Shammah. You're the Lord who is with me. And then I start praying Scripture. Lord, in your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. I will not fear for you are with me. I will not anxiously look about me. You are my God. You will strengthen me. Surely you will help me. Surely you will uphold me with your righteous right hand. Praise you, Jehovah Shammah, that you are with me. You can pray like that for four or five minutes just on that one name. Praise you that you're Jehovah Makadesh, the Lord who sanctifies me. You have set me apart from all the people to be yours. I want to be holy unto you, for you, the Lord, are holy. Lord God, set me apart from all the people to be yours. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew within me a steadfast spirit. Praise you, holy God, Jehovah Makadesh. Praise you that you are Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, my banner. You fight for me while I keep silent. No weapon formed against me today or my family or this church or this city or this nation. No weapon formed against us today will prosper. Every tongue that accuses us in judgment we will condemn. This is the heritage of the Lord, thus saith the Lord. I will be protected by Almighty God today, Jehovah Nisi. Praise you that you are Jehovah Sidkenu, the Lord my righteousness. I don't have any righteousness of my own, but you are my righteousness. It is by your doing that I am in Christ Jesus, who became to me wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. You made Jesus who knew no sin to be sin in my behalf, that I might become the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. Praise you, Jehovah Sidkenu, that I right now, because of you, Jesus, I'm the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. Praise you that you are Jehovah Rohi, just like the song said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You make me to lie down in green pastures. You lead me beside the still waters. You restore my soul. You lead me in paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with all my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Praise you, Jehovah Rohi. You are the Lord, my shepherd. Praise you, Lord, that you are Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, my healer. You pardon all of my iniquities. You heal all of my diseases. You redeem my life from the pit. You crown me with loving kindness and compassion. You satisfy my ears with good things so that my youth is renewed like the eagle. In all respects, I will prosper today, be in good health, just as my soul prospers. Heal me and I will be healed. Save me and I will be saved. You are my praise. Praise you, Jehovah Rapha. Praise you that you're Jehovah Jireh, the Lord my provider. You who did not spare your own son, but delivered him up for us all. How will you not also with Jesus freely give us all things? You will supply all of my needs today according to your riches in glory through Christ Jesus. Praise you, Jehovah Jireh. Praise you, Jehovah Shalom. You're the Lord my peace. I will be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving I will let my request be made known unto God and the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard my heart and my mind in Christ Jesus you are my peace not my circumstances but you Jesus Christ you're my peace you give me peace that the world doesn't even understand praise you Jehovah Shalom be my peace today don't tell me you can't praise the Lord don't tell me you can't just grab hold of those names and start bragging on the Lord to him You'll pray worshipfully, number whatever. <laughs> pray thankfully. And I didn't just mouth that off. I prayed that while I was preaching it. 
He's a good God. Pray thankfully. Philippians 4, 6, and 7, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. Everybody say those two words. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God, and the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Every day, I thank the Lord. I say, Lord, I thank you. I have food to eat, clothes to wear, a roof over my head, and I thank you that my name is in the Lamb's book of life. I say that every day. It never gets old. It never gets old. Thank you, Lord. Just start thanking Him for what He's done for you lately. Colossians 4.2 says, Devote yourself to prayer, keeping alert in it with an attitude of thanksgiving. If your prayer life is bogged down and boring, start thanking the Lord for what He's done for you lately. How many of you know that God's been good to you? Thank Him. You parents out there, don't you love it when your kids thank you? Makes you want to give them more, doesn't it? So you just thank the Lord. Even if He doesn't give you more, you've already got what you need. Number six, if you want to pray like it matters, pray specifically. There was a blind man in Jericho named Bartimaeus begging, cried out to Jesus as he passed by. We read about it in Mark 10, verse 46 and following. They came to Jericho As he was leaving, as Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples, a large crowd, a blind beggar named Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the road. When he heard it was Jesus the Nazarene, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Notice, that's a general prayer, have mercy on me. Many were sternly telling him to be quiet. He kept crying out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him here. They called him to the blind man called the blind man saying to him, take courage, stand up, he's calling for you. Throwing aside his cloak, he jumped up, he came to Jesus, answering him. Jesus said, what do you want me to do for you? What's Jesus saying? Quit asking me just to be merciful to you. What do you want? What exactly do you want? Blind man said, well, Rabboni, teacher, I want to regain my sight. How many of you see a difference between, Lord, have mercy on me, I want to receive my sight. What's the difference? It's specific. Jesus said, okay, go. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he regained his sight and began following him on the road. Stop praying vague general prayers start praying specific prayers stop saying lord bless us start saying lord don't just bless us but lord heal me from my asthenia gravis lord don't just help us lord help me to be a better husband to donna Lord, don't just save the lost, but Lord, convict, and I name names there. i got about nine names I pray for every day. Convict them of sin, righteousness, and judgment, and let them call upon the name of the Lord. Some of those people I've been praying for for 35 years, they're still not saved, but I believe they're going to be saved. God wouldn't have me praying for them if He wasn't going to save them. You You pray specifically. Number seven, if you want to pray like it matters, pray expectantly. Pray in faith. If you don't pray in faith, you might as well not pray. You're not wishing on a star. You're not hoping God will do something. You're confident that things will be different after you pray than they were before you pray. If you don't believe that, then don't pray. Why pray if you don't think that things are going to be different after you pray than they were before you pray? I may not see the difference yet, but it doesn't matter what I see. I'm not walking by sight. I'm walking by faith. God sees it all. I love Mark 11, 23 to 24. I don't know that I understand it all, but I love it. Jesus said, truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, how many of you got problems in your life? Anybody out there? That's a mountain. That's what he's talking about. He's not talking, leave the mountains alone. God doesn't want to change the mountains. He wants to move the problem. 
Whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and cast in the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says is going to happen, it will be granted him. Therefore, I say to you, all things for which you pray and ask, believe that you've received them, and they will be granted to you. If that, does, if that means anything, it means you've got to pray in faith. Hebrews eleven six 6 says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and, what read this, he is a rewarder, he is a rewarder, For those who seek Him, God does things for people that pray that He does not do for other people that don't pray. That's not fair. No, that's just the way it is. You don't invest in prayer, you don't get prayer answered. That's like saying, well, I don't want to save any money, I just need some money down the road. Well, you got to put something in to get something out. Hello, America. You had to put something in to get something out. And when it comes to God, you've got to sow some spiritual seed. Sow in prayer. You might sow in the morning. Sow at night. Sow in the daytime. Wake up in the middle of the night, just start talking to God. Just sow seed all the time. And after a while, you're going to see a harvest. Can't help it. You sow seed in prayer, God will give it to you. You've got to ask in faith. Number eight, if you want to pray like it matters, pray scripturally. John 15, 7, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. You got to live in this book. You got to pray and you got to live in this book. You got to spend time in this book. You got to get the word of God's got to get you. If you abide in me and my word abides where? in you. Then you ask. You start praying Scripture. And when you pray Scripture, God changes everything. I've gotten where I can't even pray without praying Scripture. Because when I pray the Word of God, I pray the will of God. And the Bible says this about when you pray the will of God, 1 John 5, 14 and 15, this is the confidence which we have before him that if we ask anything according to his will he hears us and if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask we know that we have the request which we have asked from him see the pattern read the word know God's will pray God's will to God pray God's word you pray the will of God and when you pray the will of God God will answer you pray scripturally pray authoritatively and I mean by that pray in Jesus name and don't just tack it on If you only say Jesus one time when you pray, you're in trouble. You're talking to him. (laughs) Pray in Jesus' name. What What does that mean? In the authority of Jesus. John 14, 13. Whatever you ask in my name, Jesus said, that will I do, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. When I was young and got turned on to the Lord, I got in a little singing group. We needed a sound system we went to country churches and they didn't have any sound system if they did it was terrible and so we just got decided we'd buy our own we went over to Blyville Arkansas bought a Yamaha big old sound system back then I was big enough to pick that thing up I'd hate to know I had to carry it now and so we carried that with us everywhere but we needed two thousand dollars this is back in 1977 so we needed two thousand dollars I went to the bank I knew Miss Katie Winchester she was the vice president of the First Citizens National Bank. There's branches of that all around Memphis right now, but they're up from Dyersburg. And I went in there, I said, Miss Katie, I need $2,000. Uh, just, I'll take it right now. <laughs> she said, what you got for collateral? I said, what is that? She said, well, I got to have something to back up the loan. I said, you know I'm going to pay, pay you. You know, you know me. You know, you know I'm going to pay you. What are you talking about? I was a hard worker. She said, I know you will, but I can't, I, it's not my money. I said, you're telling me you can't give me $2,000? I cleaned your office every day. I cleaned this whole bank every night. I, you can't even give me $2,000? You know I'm going to pay you back. You can take my whole paycheck. I don't care. I got to have collateral. So I started walking away. She said, wait a minute. I said, yes, ma'am. She said, your daddy's got money in this bank. If he will sign the loan, We'll give it to you. I went to Edgar. Asking Edgar Gaines for money? 
He was tight as the bark on a tree. He paid triple house payments before Dave Ramsey was born. He said, I, 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 I'll sign that. I said, I, I, I'll sign that. But I'm not paying a penny on it. But I found out what I could not get in my name, I could get in my Father's name. And when I go to heaven and I need prayer and I need somebody to help me, my name means nothing in heaven. But I know somebody's name who does. I go in Jesus' name, man. And I got some authority now. Amen. Amen. What I can't get from God in Steve's name, I can get in Jesus' authority. Amen. You start praying in the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I don't want anybody writing me a letter saying the Bible says it's wrong to co-sign a note. I know that. Don't, I, don't, I don't even care about that. Don't talk to me about that. <laughs> Number 10, in order to pray like it matters, pray persistently. Stay with the stuff. Jesus said in John 7, 7, Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened to you. Everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. To him who knocks it shall be opened. What man is there among you when his son asks him for a loaf will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, he will not give him a snake, will he? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give what is good to those who ask him? And those verbs are in the present tense. Here's what they mean. Ask and keep on asking. Knock and keep on knocking. Seek and keep on seeking. Like a two-year-old. Would you be quiet? No, would you be quiet? They just keep talking. Just go before God and say, God, I'm not letting you go till you bless me. I'm grabbing hold with the hands of faith. I'm grabbing hold of your robe of grace. And when grace and faith get together, good things going to happen. I'm not letting go till I get an answer. When's the last time you prayed like that? Some of y'all get mad at God. You ask God one thing one time and you say, why didn't he answer my prayer? It takes more than that. Luke 18, 7, now will not God bring about justice for his elect who cry to him day and night? Cry to him day and night. When's the last time you cried to the Lord day and night? Pray persistently. Two more things. If you want to pray like it matters, pray fervently. I was reading 1 Samuel 1. I'm going to be teaching on Samuel. Men, starting this Thursday morning, eight weeks on Samuel. One of the greatest men of God, one of the greatest prayer warriors in the Bible. You need to be here, 6 o'clock. We're out by 7. Go to the fellowship hall, $5. We'll feed you a, a meal that we should charge you 10 for. So we're taking that out of the music budget, I guess. I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> but you come. We're going to talk on Samuel. Here's what happened. Samuel's mother was a prayer warrior. 1 Samuel 1, 14 and 15. Eli said to her, how long will you make yourself drunk? Put away your wine from you. But Hannah replied, no, my Lord. I'm a woman oppressed in spirit. I've drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have poured out my soul before the Lord. She was praying so hard for a child that it looked like she was drunk. When's the last time somebody accused you of being intoxicated because you were pouring out your soul to God in prayer? When's the last time you shouted unto the Lord with a voice of triumph? When's the last time you really, really intensely poured out your heart to God? That's why you shut the door, by the way. You really get after it with God in prayer. You may not be so dignified all the time. Some of y'all want dignity. God wants you to be desperate. That's what he wants. You get in a, you get your back against a wall. You get somebody you love that's sick. Or you get sick. Or you have a problem with your marriage. You're going to get desperate. You're going to start praying fervently. It means white hot prayer. Jesus prayed it like this, Luke 22, verse 44, being in agony, he was praying fervently. His sweat became like drops of blood falling to the ground. When's the last time you broke a sweat praying?
you'd better start praying this way. Look at me. Our country is in trouble. We've got people on television mad because we're interviewing a su Supreme Court justice guy that doesn't think we ought to kill babies before they're born. And we've got people vehemently arguing, a woman should have that right. I'm not talking about the woman's right. What about the baby's right? Who's speaking up for the baby? Who's speaking up for the baby? How can God bless a country when 3,000 children are slaughtered every day in abortion? If 3,000 people, if we took 3,000 children and threw them off the Memphis Bridge in the, Memphis, in the Mississippi River, there would be a war in America and it would be stopped like that. But 3,000 children are aborted every day and we don't say a word. That doesn't stir your soul. Your soul is hard toward the things of God. And I ask you before God, start praying about that. If you had an abortion, yes, God will forgive you. But you need to ask God to forgive you. Because it is sin. Pray fervently like it matters. Last thing, pray submissively. When you get through praying, you've prayed all your scriptures, you've prayed in the name of Jesus, you've prayed as hard as you can, you've shut the door, you've called out to God, you've done everything you know to do, then pray this, Matthew 6, 10. Let's all pray it together. Stand up and don't leave. Doors are locked. <laughs> Let's all pray this together, good and strong. Here we go. At the end of the day, we're, we're, we can't make God do anything, all right? And we don't know how to pray sometimes. How many of you know that sometimes you don't know how to pray? Amen? So at the end of your prayer, sum it up like this. Let's pray it out loud. Here we go. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. How many of you know that God's will is the best way? Amen? Let's give Him praise. Let's, say, let's ask God to help us to be people of prayer.